morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Fellowship Online. As you all might be able to tell, we are in a different location today. Um, my name is Renisha Lyon. This is my husband, John Lyon, and we're actually recording from our very new home. And the reason why I tell you all that is because God really made a divine connection for us in a period where it was kind of like, question mark, Lord, what's, what's happening? What's, you know, where are we gonna go? I actually got laid off my job. And God was still able in that space to make a divine connection and we are now in our new home so that's where we're recording from today so just to catch you all up do you want to tell them a little bit about the connection series sure i've been really blessed by this series and so has my family pastor tony has been talking to us about the importance of connections which couldn't be more appropriate in a time like this where a lot of people may be struggling to establish those or finding creative ways to establish connections but realizing that we have to be connected to people but we also have to be really connected to god and particularly last week, you talked about being connected to God's plan, which the total plan sometimes can seem kind of ambiguous, so it can be tougher to do when we want to be in control of everything. But when we can trust our Father in heaven, that the things that he's going to do in our life are for the glory of God and for our good, then we're able to really walk in that plan with full faith and full confidence and full obedience to what it is that God has called us to do. So we've been really blessed, and we're looking forward to what it is that he has for us on today. But first, we're going to get to praise and worship after a quick word of prayer. All right, let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for, for your divine love, for your divine providence. God, we thank you so much that you are God that we can trust. Lord, we ask you for grace to help us trust you more. Lord God, we ask that you bless this service. We ask that you bless the man of God who will be bringing forth the word. We ask that you bless our praise and worship team, Lord God. Lord, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit into everyone's houses, into their cars, wherever they may be located, Lord Jesus. Give them a word that will resonate with them, that will sit on their hearts and their minds, Lord God. Create good change in their life, Lord Jesus, from the word that you're about to give them on today. Lord God, we love you. We place this service in your hands, and we thank you for what's about to come forth. Lord, we send up this prayer. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. And now it's time for our worship experience. See things like you do today, oh God. To see things like you God, do I look to you this 
you are enjoying service thus far and listen you can connect with us beyond Sunday because here at fellowship it is our endeavor to love God love people and impact the world so this is not something that we just do on Sunday it's good throughout the week so let me tell you a couple ways that you can connect with us you can find us on Facebook by searching the fellowship you can follow us on Instagram by going to at fellowship church WS and you can find us on our website by going to thefellowshipws.org. You can also find us on your respective app by uh, searching Fellowship Custom. All right. And in addition to connecting with us, we want to continue in the worship service by the way of giving. For those of you that are members of Fellowship Church, this is the time where we give our tithes and offerings to support the mission, to allow us to be a church that impacts the world and that loves people and that loves God well. And so this is the time that we actually have to give tithes and offering. And if you out there are watching and you've been blessed by this ministry, have been blessed by the word, feel free to actually sow a seed into this fertile ground. I'm gonna tell you the ways to give. The first way that you can give, you can actually just look at the link that's below whatever app that you're watching this on. Secondly, you can actually text to give. And so all you do is text the word give to the phone number 844-945-1533. Just text give, put a space in the amount that you want to give and we'll receive that. As always, thank you so much for your giving. And now a word from Pastor Tony. What's up, God's people? Come on in the house. We're so glad that you are here and you are spending your valuable time with us here at Fellowship Church. Look, my name is Pastor Tony. I'm the lead pastor here at Fellowship Church, and I am just ecstatic that you would spend your valuable time here with us today. We've got a great word for you today. Pray that you've had a blessed week. Pray that everybody is safe and sound and healthy and wealthy and wise and all that good stuff. We pray that God's blessing has just overtaken you on this week. Pray that you have been blessed by the worship and are ready to be fed 
led by the word of God. Listen, we're going to be wrapping up uh, our series about connections. And I pray that everybody's been blessed over the last couple of weeks. If you missed a week, let's go back in the previous weeks. But we've been talking about just connecting not only with God's people and places, but you know, last week we talked about um, connecting with um, God's plan and his vision for our lives. And so today we're going to wrap it up. And I'm really, y'all know me, I'm, I'm a personal accountability preacher, you know, that we are the, we are the biggest player in uh, our lives going forward and our visions coming to pass. So, you know, I'm always going to end it on what is my role, what is my responsibility in making sure that I am connecting. Because not only am I supposed to connect, but I'm supposed to be a connector. I'm supposed to be a vehicle. I'm, I'm supposed to be a conduit to which God connects through. And so we're going to talk about that just a little bit today. So I've got two scriptures I want to talk about. Is I, then we're going to just talk about some uh, scenario and a, and a case study of when, uh, when people d uh, were allowed and allowed themselves to be a connector and connected current things that they were doing to something that would later happen for their benefit. Okay, we're going to start at 1 Corinthians 13th chapter, the 12th verse. It says this, uh, and, and this is in the Message Bible, so I love the way it reads. It says, we don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist, but it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We will see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly just as he knows us. Isn't that like a microcosm of life? We can see ahead of us, but we can't see around the corner. It's easy to look back. It's easy to look straight forward. But we can't look around a corner. We have to wait till we get there to have the perspective. We don't see, even though we have a burning vision in our hearts, even though we are sure and we've got our vision boards and we've got our plans and we've got our business plans, we've got all that stuff, we cannot see what's around the corner. And this scripture is saying, say, we don't see things clearly yet. It's like we're squinting and we're looking through a fog. But it won't be long before we have some clarity. And that's the reason we have the gift. That's the reason I was talking about a couple of weeks ago, the advantage that we have, people of God. We have, we are the warehouse of the Holy Spirit who knows all, who sees all, who's never lost a case, who's never been caught by surprise. And you may not see clearly now, but before long, God's going to give you clarity. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll be time. Maybe it'll be something somebody does. Maybe it'll be something, a closed door. Maybe it'll be an open door. But it won't be long if we trust in the plan of God. If we take the step that we know to take, rather than worrying about 10 steps down the road, if we take the step that we know to take, he will make things clearly after a while. And then after that, we will see it all then. We will see it as clearly as God sees us. See, we have to understand that we may not, we may be in obscurity and we may be like, where am I, Lord? But God is up the top looking like, Lord, my poor child. All they got to do is just trust me for the next step. Just listen to what they got to say, and I'm going to lead them through it. And so many times we can make things so complicated, and we can make things so convoluted and so big and so, so layered. And, 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 and God is a God of simplicity. He has levels to him, but he's very simple, very simple. God is saying, just settle yourself and just trust me. Trust my word and trust the next step they're going to give you. The next scripture I have is Ephesians 3 and 20, which is one of my all-time favorites uh, that always leads to you know, just my, my belief and just that personal responsibility that we have. And uh, Ephesians 3 and 20 says this, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask and think, but this is the part where, where it, it, it comes on us, the onus becomes on us, according to the power that worketh in us meaning that we are the regulators. We are the one that determines if we want God to be, to function, to move at a high level in our lives. He's only going to move to the degree that we move. He's only going to be active to the degree that we are active. And so he can do it seed and abundant, but we've got to make the first step. We've got to be the agitator. We've got the one to be, to be the catalyst for God to get involved. And so uh, I, I want to talk about combine these two scriptures where we're talking about that we, we, we see through a glass dimly. Uh, we can't see clearly. It's like we're squinting through, the, through a fall. We don't know. We know where the general direction is, but we don't know our next step to take and our responsibility. My subject for the next couple of minutes is in the interim. 
in the interim. I want somebody to type that in, in, in the chat line. In the interim. Because um, what, what I wanted to, to, God wanted to really extract is that we, we see the end of a thing. We see us on stage. We see us with the corner office. We see us with the, with the, with the spouse and the two point three kids and a dog and a picket fence. We see all of that end dream goal. And then we're here right now, but there is this middle passage that we have to walk out. Uh, th there is this interim, there is this dash in between where I am and where I'm going to end up that we have to manage. I did a message one time telling me, the Lord, help me manage the middle. And it, it is managing that middle. It is that interim space that is going to make a determination whether we get there, how we get there, who's going to be with us when we get there, and to the degree that, that we're going to function and attain the thing that God has showed us. It is in the interim. See, we get caught up about where we are. We get caught up about, about where we've been. We get caught up about where we're going, and we're so we're so in such a love affair of where we're going that we are negating and we are neglecting the interim. And you can't get there without managing and being present here. And so many times I see people that have these fanciful ideas, so fanciful and so grand that they are overlooking what's in front of them. So, and then what happens, things end up falling to the ground and they say, oh, that wasn't God. And I'm so disappointed. I'm even angry at God. Why would God? No, God was, for, he was for real. God was for real, for real when he told you that. But he also says in his word that we have to manage the middle. We have to, uh, we have to manage this interim space before we get there. I've got an example for a case study we're going to talk about today uh, of some things that we can learn in the interim. As we can, as we can learn that it's going to prepare us for our great and grand moment, we have to pay attention and be present and accounted for in the space of the interim. We're going to talk about David. And we know David ended up being the great king. We, end, we know he ended up being the one that, sl that slayed Goliath. We know he's the one that ended up being, uh, uh, that Saul got so jealous of because he was such a great warrior. We know that David is the one uh, that, uh, that brought the Ark of the Covenant back and, and was so happy about it that he danced out of his clothes. We know all of, we know he's the one that went down as a man after God's own heart. We know, we know the highlights of David. But a lot of times people gloss over the interim, the, the moments of obscurity, the, moment, the, the times when he was just the Rudy youngest boy of Jesse. And those are, the, those are the times that prepare people for their greatness. So I want to talk about three things about David. And this can, it can be found in 1 Samuel, I think 16th and 17th chapter. It is talking about the plight of David. As you all know, the, uh, the, 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 the prophet Samuel came to the house um, to, anoint, to anoint a king. Told Jesse, say, God has told me that there was a king among you. And he said, no. And he said, hey, great, man. I'm going to bring my sons out. He tried to see. He looked at all the boys and said, yeah, this boy looks like a king. He got, he's got the broad shoulders. He got all that. But he's not the one. He's not the one. He said, do you have? He said, yeah, my son, David, he's tending to the sheep. He said, okay, we're not going to sit down until he, until we, until he comes. We're not going to sit down and eat until he comes. Well, he comes, and all of a sudden, God said, hey, that's the one. So he pours the horn, horn of oil over his head, and the oil begins to flow, meaning that the anointing flows when it matches with the right person and the right DNA for the right moment and the right time. So you don't have to worry about everybody's approval. You have to worry about the right approval at the right time at the right moment. But I digress. And all of a sudden, he's anointed king. And then the next couple of chapters, where do you find David again? With his kingly self. David is tending to his father's sheep. He's picking bugs out. He's picking fleas out, shoveling sheep dung. And he's being faithful to his father's work. So point number one, in order to manage that interim, I know you have a great vision. I know it's grand. I know you're going to impact millions and millions of people. But can you be faithful to a vision, even if it's not yours? That's my question today. 
You have to understand, David went back to tend to sheep after having been proclaimed by the Spirit of, a God, Spirit of God through a great and mighty powerful prophet that this boy is going to be king. He didn't get all puffed up. He said, well, Father, you're well, you know, the, 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 those are the, you know, the prophet has made the proclamation. This is the end of my sheep sheep done shoveling days i've got to go uh, to charm school to learn how to be a king and learn how to how to do all the proper protocols no 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 he immediately went back to serving his father's vision so many times we could get caught up in our vision that we don't serve other people's vision that is already ahead of us you know, we'll say things, all these Christianese kind of phrases. We'll say, you know, you know, God has called me to deeper and he's called me to higher heights and I've learned all I can learn here. When the truth of the matter is, can we be honest? You, you, you're tired of serving another person's vision. You say we get anxious, we get selfish, we get, we get high-minded, we feel like we're too good for things. And David, the, one, the man who went down as a king at the, at the man at the God's own heart. And someone say, well, why did he go down as a man at the God's own Is it because he brought back the Ark of the Covenant? Is it because he was a mighty warrior? Is it because he, uh, he, he fought Goliath? No, I believe, and I will submit to you, that one of the reasons, uh, many reasons that David went down as a man at the God's own heart because he was he was not above serving at any level he was a king kings don't have to fight in battle yet and still he said you know what my men are not going to be out there without me I'm going to be on the front line and can you serve somebody else vision even when you've got a large kingly priestly vision in your own heart it's what you do in the interim it builds character in you have you ever seen somebody that was catapulted to fame and catapulted to lots of money and, and, they, and they weren't properly uh, stewarded and they per weren't properly ushered and weren't, weren't properly mentored to get to that place? That, that place of prominence becomes a curse to them because they, they skipped the interim. They quantum leaped into a place of prominence and it became a curse to them. Do not forsake your middle passage. It is your place of, of blessing. It is your place where you build character. It is your place where you build up some fortitude. You learn how to stick to it. You learn how to deal in rough times and hard times. You learn how to be a base, like Paul said. You know, how, you know how to be on top of a mountain. You know how to be the base of the mountain. You know how to go through the whole process so that way it is not easily taken from you. It is not easily slipped through your fingers because you know how to keep something because you scrapped to get it. We don't want to be a trust fund, baby. Everything's given to us because we won't value the journey. And God is saying, I need you to enjoy and to manage that interim. The second thing that we can learn from David after he was saved, it's not, it's ba it's not bad. It's not uh, it's bad enough that his daddy had him shoveling sheep dung and tending the sheep. But he let his other brothers go on the front line. He let his other brothers go on the front line and, and, and uh, out there on battle. They were, they were uh, defending the, the country and the, and, and the nation of Israel. And, and David's like, look, man, he, he, this is what he could have been. He said, look, can I at least go out there with my brothers? And to add insult to injury, his dad said, hey, David, come here. I know you're a king and all, but I need you to go out there and take lunch to your brothers. Now, many of us have too much pride to go and serve somebody else when they're doing something that we should be doing. When God has you in a holding pattern and he releases you, now I want you to go serve somebody else that's doing the very thing <laughs> that you wish you could be doing. That's a pride check. That's a project, and many times God will instruct us to do things, and the Holy Spirit will tug us to do things, and it's really a pride check. It's a pride check, and God is saying, are you willing to take low? My mom always says, say, hey, 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 sometimes you got to take low. Sometimes you got to take the route of humility in order for God to see where your heart is. Now, David could have easily said, hey, he could have easily said, you know what? I ain't doing that. They up there ridiculing me. I'm out here in, in, in this hot, hot sun, tending your sheep. Daddy, find somebody else and wait till he come back. But no, he, he acted in a spirit of humility and service. So my question to you is, 
Can you serve your way even when it is not favorable to you? So it's one thing to serve your father who takes care of you and who provides shelter and provides meals for you. And the one, you know, I'm always going to honor my father. But can you serve somebody? Can you take the, the route of humility to somebody else who is ridiculing you? You see, see, th these are the character checks that, that God puts in our spirits. Say, so before you get there, I got to send you through a couple of tests. And see, what we, what, we, what we fail to understand, that opportunity is connected to service. I'll say that again. Opportunity is connected to service. This, here's what I mean by that. If David had not gone to serve his brothers, he would not have had the opportunity to slay Goliath. And we're we'll looking and say, God, I'm looking for my moment. I'm looking for my moment. And we're looking for it to be grand. And we're looking for a golden door with light shining around it and, 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 a, and, a, and a chamber choir saying, oh, we're, we're, we're looking for this glorious, uh, uh, fabled moment. And God is saying, David's moment for promotion was found because he initiated by doing an a, a act of service. Could it be that we are overlooking our moments of promotion because we're looking for it in a grand way when God is saying you're going to find the moment going up when you go down low? You see, I don't care what city you're in right now. I'm sure that there is a skyscraper, a, a building that is at least about 100 stories or so. And before you can build a skyscraper up, the construction people and the engineers know that they have to go so far down that they have to go down and hit bedrock so that the earth can hold up how high the structure is going to go. And there is great revelation in that, that we first have to go down low first. We have to take the route of humility before we can let God uh, uh, lift us up. And that's the reason God said in his world that the humble, the one that goes low first, is the one that's going to be exalted. Could it be possible that we're trying to elevate ourselves without first practicing humility? These are the things, these are the practices, these are, uh, are, are the cornerstones of how we're going to reach the place of prominence and how we're going to stay there because there is a difference between getting there and staying there and the reason that a lot of people don't stay there is because they have not learned the ideals and the principles and the cornerstone things that is going to keep you there when you get there and David acted in a place of humility a place of service and through that service God opened the door for advancement and promotion don't overlook the assignment that God has in front of you. This is so important that we're looking for something so grand that we are overlooking the menial task. When, what, when God's word says, if you're faithful in little, he'll bless you with the much. And God is saying, you are overlooking. Your eyes are too big. And I want you to have expectation. I, like I told you in my word, Ephesians 3 and 20, I can do it seated and abundant, but all you can ask or think is one thing to ask it, but we have to deal with what's in front of us before we make it there. And we have to be faithful to the assignment that's in front of us. The last thing I want to share with you, and I hope this has been a blessing. I'm just about to type in that space down there in the interim. The last thing that was a product of what he did in the interim is that after he went to see his brothers, he said, look, why y'all running from this guy? He's like defaming our God and our people and he's making mockery of us. We don't have to take this. And they said, hey, what's, hey, um, you know, what's going to happen to the person who defeats this? Oh, you get the king's daughter? He said, okay, well, I can deal with that. Let's do this. And so he goes to Saul. Who's over there scared himself, the king? He said, King, I, I want to fight this guy because this, this ain't cool. I, I, I'm, he's like, Look, okay, okay, well, here's my armor, here's my shield, here's my sword. And you got to understand, David was a little 
Rudy guy. He was a little skinny guy. He probably, I would say he might be like, you could say in today's, you know, he, uh, today's man, he might be like five, six and might weigh like a, you know, a buck 20, you know? I mean, he was a little scrawny guy. And, and then all of a sudden, Saul puts all this stuff on him. And then it's probably heavy, and he's like, no, King, I haven't tried this. I, can't, I haven't tested this. I know what I do, and I know, what, I know the tools and the weapons I use, and I'm proficient at those. He said, well, are you sure? Like, like this guy's a bit, he said, look, let me tell you my resume, King. You might just met me. You may know my brothers. You just met me. But my resume is this. I've been faithful. I was a tender to my father's sheep. And one time a lion came and tried to uh, take one of my dad's sheep. And I ripped that lion in half because I was so faithful not only to uh, my mission, but I was faithful to my dad's vision and his property. And then after that, then a bear came, like a whole big old bear <laughs> came and he took another sheep. And I... I I was so faithful that I risked my life and limb, and I destroyed that, that, that bear. He said, I tore this bear up, and I tore this lion up. And if I can do that, then this guy, like, yeah, I'm, he, he's light work to me because I've done this. W what I am saying is, what you do in that enter, what he was saying is that what you do in obscurity is dress rehearsal for your moment of greatness. What you do in moments when nobody's looking, your faithfulness that nobody sees, your discipline that nobody sees, uh, you're taking the route of humility and, and being dedicated and being, uh, being a person that, that is locked in, uh, the reading, the studying, the calling people, the mentorship, the making other people's dreams happen when yours has not happened yet. All those things you do in obscurity, it is preparing you for your moment of greatness. And I want you to know, don't despise your small beginnings. Don't despise the fact that God has, God has you on the tail end. Because guess what? According to the word of God, the last shall end up being first. God is a God of reversal. And if you just be faithful and if you just be committed to what God has assigned you to do, if you would just manage that interim, if you would just do what is important, what God has assigned to you in this interim period, I promise you, brother, I promise you, sister of God, that God is preparing you for your moment of greatness. And you will be able to draw back on the lessons. You will be able to draw, uh, draw from the wisdom that you glean from those moments of obscurity and what what you have to realize that everything you've been through has been dress rehearsal it has been preparing you for your moment for God to showcase you to the world and so I want you to settle yourself don't despise where you are don't accuse God don't walk away weeping may endure for a night but there is joy that is coming in the morning and can I tell you something even when it's dark at 12 a.m. it is still morning already so even when you can't see your way, even when you're like this scripture here says right here, said we are looking through a fog and we're squinting and we don't see it clearly. But God is working a far more exceeding weight of glory in us. We don't understand what we're going through. It is not favorable. It's hurtful. It is painful. It is inconvenient. It is all those things that are negative. But if you can see past where you're at and look, God said, God, you have me here for a reason. This is just the interim. So, so if somebody asks you and you may be going through a tough time, don't lie to them and say, I'm blessed and highly favored. See, a lot of times we, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll fake the funk and we'll just say stuff because we don't want people to let us know we're going through. So you know what? I'm going through, but I'm going through. This is just the interim period that I am going through, that, that, that I am enduring. Just like Paul said, endure that hardness as a good soldier. I am enduring this interim on my way to my mountaintop. I am enduring this sickness on my way to divine health. I am enduring this, 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 uh, this season of lack on my way to my season of prosperity. I am enduring being at the bottom of the totem pole on my way to the top in the interim. God knows the way that he is taking you. He doesn't make mistakes. And if he has led you to this season, if he has led you to a dark or dry place in your life, just know it's just part of the interim. It's just part of the story. This is just a chapter. This is not the whole book. And God will prove himself.
God is not a man that he should lie. No, the son of man that he should have to repent if he said it, if he promised. He is just and he is faithful and he is willing and he is eager to bring that thing to pass. All he needs you to do is be present and manage the interim. Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you, Lord, for where you have us. Lord, you don't have us at the at our place of prominence yet, Lord. You don't have us at our place of milk and honey yet, Lord, but you have us in the middle. You have us in the interim period, God, and we thank you, Lord, for the interim because if it were not for the interim, we could not get to the, to the divine destination that you have for us, God. So we thank you, Lord, that you steady our hearts, Lord, that there is connection between the interim and the interim product God Lord the connection place between where we are and where you're taking us is the interim God so let us fall in love with our interim wherever you have us Lord if it's a place of hard trial Lord let us lock into our interim God if it's a place of prominence right now Lord let it let us lock into our interim God for Lord it's in the interim God you're building character in us it is in the interim God that you are building favor and you're building 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 some stick to itiveness in our heart and in our spirits, God, you're building endurance, Lord, in that interim. So we thank you right now, Lord, that you're blessing us, Lord. Lord, you, you, uh, you make no mistakes. Everywhere you lead us is good and it's for our good. So, Lord, we trust what you're doing. We trust what you have us, Lord, and we trust that you are leading us into green pastures. You are elevating us, Lord, as we take the route of humility, God, as we serve other people's visions, God, as we uh, draw on the history and the lessons that you have taught us, God. Let us be ever more mindful, Lord, that where we are now, is not where we will always be, God. Encourage our hearts. Let us know that you are with us, you are for us, and we cannot fail if we keep our trust and our reliance in you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. We pray that you were blessed by this word today, and we pray that you share this word today uh, with somebody else and let them know that, hey, you know what? I'm just in the interim. This is not my end place. This is just my interim, and I'm going to get through this interim on my way to my mountaintop. God bless you on this week. We love you, and don't forget to embrace the connection of your interim on the way to your wealthy and your healthy place. We love you. God bless you. Have a blessed week. Peace. In the interim, man, if you're like me, you certainly got something to chew on from that sermon. Pastor Tony reminded us, particularly from the example of David, how important it is that even when you're called to something and you know that God has a vision for your life, to actually still participate in your interim phase and yeah. in exactly what God has called you to do. Where has he called you to serve? Because in that place of service, as he said, a lot of times it's preparation for the things that you need. And so I'm reminded that, as the Bible says, that whatever is done in the dark will come to the light. Mm -hmm. The ministry, the prayer that is done, the, the mentorship, as he mentioned, uh, serving on the worship team, wherever it is that you are in your life, find a place that God is calling you to serve as you're being prepared and being ready for the vision that God is calling you for in the interim. Yeah, yeah. And I, I believe that many of us that are, are watching, uh, we, we may be in a place where it's, it's like, Lord, I, I know that you promised me this, or I know that I'm called to do that work there, but where I'm at, I'm, I'm in the fields, mm -hmm. I'm sweaty, I'm working hard, my boss talking to me any kind of way. What in the world is this? This is not where you told me I'd be. Um, and, and you may feel out of place, you might feel out of order, you might even, might even feel like you missed the promise. Mm. Uh, but Pastor Tony just, he assured us that even in that place, like like he said about the building, that when you wanna build a skyscraper, you know, 100, 100 stories high, you have to go really low first. So even when you're in that place where you can't see around the corner, you can't see, uh, you know, what's the next step, Know that God has you. Know that even in what, what you may feel is your is your low place, that he's propelling you and preparing you to go really, really high. So don't give up there. Uh, and, and we win with Christ, right? When we connect with Christ, that's whenever we rise. So we want to give you an opportunity to accept Christ today if this sounds like something that you want to go ahead and invest in and, and plug into and we're connecting with a God who has shown us the importance as he himself humbled himself, made himself low as a, as a servant, coming from 
king on high from being uh, the king of kings, the lord of lords, sitting on the throne of the right hand of the father, but he came down and made himself low to serve humankind, to give us a way to be connected to God. That story never gets old. The hope <laughs> yeah. never gets old. Yeah. And talking about that foundation for a deep skyscraper, the foundation is always built on Christ. So mm-hmm. we want to give you the opportunity to put your faith in Christ right now. Pray this prayer with me. Dear Father, we thank you, Lord, that you yourself, that Jesus Christ came down, made himself lower than a servant, mm-hmm. was born in a manger so that he could walk this life patterning what it is to be a follower of you, God. And that he died on the cross, not only after patterning that life, Lord God, but then also dying on the cross and resurrecting, giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit that if we would believe on his name and accept the Holy Spirit, that we would have strength to be connected to him, that we would have the ability to be a child of God and to be connected to God, not just here in this life, but in in eternity for forever. We thank you for that opportunity. We thank you for those of us that have placed our faith in you. And Lord God, how this sermon is encouraging us on today. Lord, let it take root. Let the seed uh, that was sown germinate and let us produce fruit from the connection that we've been encouraged to have today. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. If you said that prayer, there's going to be a call right on the bottom of your screen. Make sure you call in. You can talk to a minister at that time. You can tell them, hey, I prayed the prayer of salvation today. I believe in Christ. I have some questions. They're going to walk you through that and they're going to be there to answer your call. So it's always good to welcome new believers into the body of faith. And if that's you today, we welcome you and we are so very, very, very happy that you made that decision. So we've come to the end of our service. We thank you so much for joining in, for tuning in, for liking, for sharing, for commenting. Please share this with your family, your friends, journal about it, think on it all throughout the week and continue to connect with us. But until next week, we'll see you later. Be blessed. Bye.